Hey there, and a welcome back. My name is Jenna Lee, and I am bringing you all in through a week of what we are eating here in our little 100-year-old farmhouse. This week, we wrote on our chalkboard that's been sitting in the kitchen well for months and months, and we don't always use it. But my daughter and I, you can tell by the cute little handwriting up there, wrote what we're having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner each day of the week. And I can't tell you how such a simple, small thing made such a huge difference in our kids' moods, their excitement for each meal, and it just helped me think one step ahead of each meal. I am a simple farmhouse cook. I like to shop in bulk, and so I don't always plan out a menu and go shopping in the grocery store for those ingredients. And I feel like with today's grocery store prices that I just shop what is in season and what is the best price at the time. And so that doesn't always mean going and finding that particular ingredient, but it means always keeping the pantry stocked with the main ingredients that we use all the time. So this morning we are having some sourdough waffles and I'll make sure to post that recipe that I'm using down below, but I started out by fermenting my milk and flour and sourdough starter all together the night before and putting that in the fridge. And then in the morning I added the eggs and the butter and honey and baking soda, baking powder, all those things prior. And now I'm just preparing some syrup. I haven't bought syrup in a container from the store for quite some time. And I needed to restore the little clay dish that keeps my brown sugar moist. This little container is absolutely amazing. A while back, I shared with you guys a kitchen reorganization where I got all new containers and organized my baking station. All of my containers are actually from cooeyhousewares.com and I couldn't be happier with them. They are functional, practical, um, but they are fitted for the everyday life, like making sure that your brown sugar um, doesn't go dry. Thank you, Kui Housewares, for sponsoring this video. And you've heard me mention them before, so if you haven't got something from them, I think it's about time. Use my code PIONEER10 for a discount. So after letting this little clay dish soak, I just put it right back in this little compartment on the top of my brown sugar and it stays nice and moist. My maple syrup has two cups of brown sugar, about a tablespoon of maple flavoring and half a cup of water. Recently, I was able to do a little bit of thrifting and I found this great little syrup bottle. I'm always looking for inexpensive, beautiful little vintage dishes that I can bring in the home and use on a daily basis. This is a cute little dish you would find maybe in a diner um, sitting on the table having some syrup in it. So I thought we would put our syrup in there and bring this into the everyday mundane. This being our first year homeschooling, one thing that I have enjoyed so much is taking time to really feed my kids and not being so rushed by a schedule and places to go that we can't take time to eat good food. So however life is for you, however your schedule may be, Try to take moments, take time to eat well and feed the people in your home good food. Our breakfasts are often balanced out by a farm fresh fried egg here on the cast iron skillet. So my goal each week is to get four loaves of sourdough bread made. They're usually a soft sandwich dough loaf that I make but this time I'm putting together some artisan loaves. 
I just need to keep brushing up on the artisan loaf skill. Sometimes I go weeks and weeks of just making sandwich bread and I want to keep my skills up on the sourdough game. So this week it's four artisan loaves. I love to make artisan loaves when we are having something like soup or stew or maybe even a pasta that has some delicious dipping sauce. I love this crunchy loaf dipped in something delicious. Maybe even some olive oil and some herbs. But it's such a beautiful, simple loaf with water and flour and salt. Today we had a really quick lunch of grilled cheese sandwiches over our homeschool lesson. And so I didn't catch that on film. I'm working right on to dinner. Um, the meals today are definitely inspired by things that I have in the fridge and need to get eaten. I thawed out some of these bone-in chicken thighs, and I'm going to get those started by browning them in butter on the cast iron skillet. I was inspired by this herb that I have in the cupboard, um, Herbs de Provence, and it has beautiful notes of basil and thyme and rosemary and some lavender in it, and just kind of has this herby floral scent, and I thought it would be perfect for just a spring chicken dish. So I'm going to douse my chicken with some of that beautiful Herb de Provence and some garlic powder. I did look up a recipe and I was inspired by this recipe that had a creamy Herbs de Provence lemon sauce. So I always take a recipe and then I kind of put a spin on it and adapt it slightly. So I'm going to be browning off the chicken right here in the skillet and then I'm going to take them out of the skillet and put them right into my Instapot so that it will be um, cooking a little bit faster and then I'm going to be making um, a delicious lemon cream sauce in this skillet that has all of the good um, browned chicken pieces in it. It just so happens that most of the meals that I'm cooking with you guys today are actually in the Instapot. Um, that is not on purpose. This is just how I use my Instapot on a daily basis in my kitchen. Um, but if you don't have one, you could easily put it in your crock pot or even just put a lid right here on your um, Dutch oven or pan and cook those chicken thighs nice and slow. I'm adding some lemon juice to the chicken and I think I'll just throw this lemon rind right on in there um, for sake of flavor and cook this here. I think I cooked this for about 15 minutes. And then in the skillet, I'm just going to add a small chopped onion and about six or seven cloves of chopped garlic as well and cook those until they're nice and browned. And then today I'm actually going to be using um, a, it happens to be a non-alcoholic cooking wine, but if you have a nice um, white cooking wine, um, go ahead and pull that out, or you could even use some chicken broth as well. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter here so her sauce is nice and rich. And then I'll be adding just a little bit of that cooking wine to pull all of those brown pieces right up. It just makes such a rich and delicious flavor. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of lemon juice and a little bit of pepper flakes for a kick and the lemon zest of one lemon and let that kind of simmer here on the stove until it's a bit thickened. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of the Herbes de Provence. And it's starting to smell so good. When that sauce has thickened quite a bit, you're gonna to wanna to take it right off of the heat and pour in one cup of whole cream. I'll be sure to pin this recipe right down below. There will be a link to the recipe that I used as an inspiration. And this sauce is pretty much from that recipe. The only thing I added much was just a twist on the chicken. 
I'm going to be adding some orzo pasta to this chicken. I thought it just needed some pasta. Just thicken it up a little bit and I knew my family would love it. I have actually never cooked pasta in the Instapot, so I had to look up some instructions on how to do that. It was two cups of orzo pasta and three cups of liquid. And you only cook it for one minute here in the Instapot and then you let it rest or you let it decompress for one minute. So I did a little bit less than three cups of liquid because I have all the juices from the chicken in there. But add a little bit of salt and let that cook for one minute. And while that's going, I'm just throwing together a really quick spinach salad. I'm adding some sweet peppers and some tomatoes. Have you ever been to an Italian restaurant where they shred some cheese over your dish, some Parmesan cheese? Well, I have a little gadget, a, actually an antique little vintage gadget that shreds cheese, and I wanted to give it a go today. I've had it for actually a long time, and I cleaned it, dusted it off, and put some beautiful Parmesan cheese in there and shredded that over the salad. And I think I'm going to be using this gadget a lot more. It worked like a charm, and it just made everything feel so beautiful. <laughs> I love how the orzo turned out. It just really thickened up this dish and it's just going to fill up all of our bellies all the more. We are going to top it off with some of this beautiful creamy lemon de Provence herb sauce and serve it with some fresh artisan sourdough bread. And I loved just dipping this bread right into the sauce just as much as the rest of the dish. This was one of my favorite dishes we've had in a long, long time. I am going to make sure that this recipe gets put in to the routine of dinners. It was absolutely delicious. And I think it was definitely made in around 30, 35 minutes. And so it really didn't take that long to put together. And um, thanks to the Instapot, that is. Um, but it was absolutely a winner. You're going to have to give it a try. And I just think it really says spring chicken dinner. I was so inspired by something that I saw at a friend's house the other day. She had a whiteboard sitting next to her kitchen and it had just a few bullet points. The time they needed to wake up, when they needed to be at school, what time dinner was, and what time their sports events were at. I think it's one thing for mom to have a schedule and to know what's happening and then it's another thing to have a board that tells everybody what's going to happen and it just kind of gives everyone that ease of mind knowing what's going to happen that day although I don't follow that system exactly I implemented it just with some meals it just kind of saves that question that your kids are always asking you what's for dinner today what's for breakfast today what's for lunch and I feel like it saves that bit of mental space that mother's are so in need of <laughs> we need all the mental space we can get we have so many things we're juggling and I feel like schedules um, are more of goals things that you're you're shooting for that day it's a target and they're not always followed perfectly but it's a goal and it's something that you're shooting for and as a family collectively it's something that you can collectively be shooting for This morning, we are having a bit of a continental style breakfast. I'm putting together some banana nut muffins and I'm just going to boil some eggs and lay those out on the table. We have a lot of schoolwork to be doing today. We just need to get to the books. So I thought if I just made a few snacky type healthy breakfast items, we could snack and do school at the same time throughout the morning. I have two banana bread recipes that I follow. This one is the healthy version. This one is whole wheat. It's made with honey and olive oil or coconut oil. So there's no high processed anything in it. And um, serving it with some eggs just makes it a really healthy, balanced, um, high protein meal for the kids. And I, I feel like that really helps them focus. The other recipe I like to follow is more of like a banana cake. It's that sweet, 
banana bread that you could top off with cream cheese frosting and serve it for dessert or for a snack. That sweet banana bread recipe happens to be from a Joanna Gaines cookbook, and maybe I'll share that with you guys sometime in the future. But for today, I will be posting this healthy banana nut muffins uh, down in the description box below. Each day looks a little bit different. Um, and I love the freedom of being able to have days that have heavier loads and days that have lighter loads. Days that there needs to be more house cleaning or gardening, and that's coming faster than, than I can believe. Days that the animals need caring for. And so today, breakfast is, is a quick one. And one wonderful thing about making up some muffins and having that throughout the day is it's, it serves as a breakfast and a snack. And if you had somewhere that you needed to be in the morning, you really could make these muffins the night before and boil up some eggs the night before and really put them out on the table and it would feel even more like a continental breakfast, something that your family could grab quickly um, or put into a lunchbox and it could be on the go. As for us today, we are just going to hang around the kitchen table. This is where we eat and this is where we study as well. So I'm going to be leaving all of these things out as we are hitting the books and getting our studies done this morning. And before I know it, it's time to turn around and prepare another meal even faster than I can prepare the kitchen for. So I'm hopping in the kitchen to get some things done, get these dishes put away and get this kitchen tidied up so that we can start a whole nother meal. This is just the story of cooking from scratch, three meals a day in the kitchen. But if I can keep the dishwasher constantly going, it feels doable. So for lunch today, we are having open-faced tuna melts. And so I'm just putting together a little bit of a tuna fish salad. I like to do one can of tuna uh, with about half a cup of mayo. I have some homemade relish from last year's garden that I'm adding here, a little bit of salt, and about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I'm going to mix that up and put it right onto some of the sourdough bread that we've already made just yesterday. And a couple videos back, I made some sauerkraut with you. It was a new sauerkraut recipe that had some caraway seeds and garlic and carrots. And so that's finally done. And it's a beautiful, rich purple color. We're going to be adding that to our sandwiches I've been adding this to eggs, sandwiches, pasta, um, barbecue meat, just about anything you can think of. And it's delicious, savory sauerkraut. Has a very rich garlic flavor to it. And then I'm gonna top this off with some cheddar cheese and put it under the broiler to get nice and toasty. And that's just a really wholesome, um, delicious and quick lunch. And I'm just going to serve these open face sandwiches with some chopped up apples and some tomatoes. Some people think that a woman cooking from scratch means that she's laboring in the kitchen all day long. And it doesn't really look that way. I'm really not in the kitchen all the time. Now, there is some preparation work involved, like making some of your own bread and then having that to eat on all week. But cooking from scratch can actually be quick. It can be simple. And just having those whole foods on hand can make that possible. Meals don't have to be rushed and high processed to be quick and healthy. I like to really be the guardian of our schedule in the sense that I 
guard our time pretty wisely. We are not involved in a ton of extracurricular things, but we do go to a homeschool co-op once a week. And right now, all of our kids are involved in soccer, which means that we are going to town a lot more than usual. So for tonight, I'm going to be putting something together in the Instapot once again for um, a quick dinner because we have to get over to some soccer practice here pretty soon. So I am washing up some small golden potatoes. I'm going to put that in the Instapot. And then I have more thought out bone in chicken thighs that need to be used. So I'm just going to be adding some of those chicken thighs along with some carrots and some seasoning and it's going to be a very very simple it's a pot meal but the nice thing is that it will be done in about 20 minutes i am taking the skin off of these chicken thighs um i just don't like having all of that soggy fat and skin in here in the it's pot I used to think that I needed to have a whole week planned out or even a whole month planned out of menus. And for some people that might work for you. And if it does, then great. Get a spreadsheet out, type that up, put it on a whiteboard, put it on a chalkboard, have that ready for your family. For me, organization and scheduling is not my strong suit. So even just putting what we're going to eat for the day and just going day by day, working through what's in the fridge, that seems to work for me. And it's something that I can keep up on. And it's something that can be spontaneous enough or change enough that I feel like it's flexible enough for my lifestyle. My friend that had the whiteboard and the rough draft of their schedule for the day I was so impressed with her organization skills and saw um, areas in my life that I could improve on. But I was surprised when she told me how overwhelmed she was and wondering if she was doing enough for her kids. And it reminded me that we all struggle with the very same thoughts um, and wondering if we are doing enough and seeing where we can always improve. And in all honesty, there's always going to be areas to improve. There's always going to be things that we can do better at. Um, there's always going to be places in our life that we wish we were more organized, more put together, more thoughtful, more intentional about. But here's the truth, guys. Here is the truth. The truth is, is there's not one trick that is going to solve all your problems. Not one Action is going to fix the way that you do everything. It's all the small, simple things. All those little choices to do a little bit better that make the biggest difference. The last day that I'm going to share with you is the day that we're going to a homeschool co-op. So this morning we are starting out with some simple oatmeal, but I'm going to show you how to make it really creamy and delicious. And then I'm going to put together a really quick pasta salad for lunch. And then tonight we're having leftovers. i um, going to finish off all of the delicious things that we've been cooking throughout the day. First, I'm starting out with my usual drink mix. I've been drinking some magnesium supplements every morning, and I find that it really has been helping with my mood and sleep. And then I'm putting together my creamy oats with two cups of milk and two cups of water and two cups of rolled oats. I find that cooking with milk makes them all the more creamy and delicious. And then I'm going to be washing some strawberries. I start out by putting them in a bowl of water with one fourth a cup of vinegar and letting them soak for exactly two minutes. If you let them soak for longer than that, then they can start to ferment. But this is how I'm cleaning my berries off. And then I'm going to rinse them with some fresh cold water and store them in some jars in the fridge. Storing your strawberries fresh like this in a jar can keep them from going bad for up to three to four weeks. And I learned this from my friend over at thecrosslegacy.com. And it's just genius. So I've got my creamy oats. And I like to top them off with a tablespoon of peanut butter. That might seem kind of funny to some of you, but I love the fat and saltiness that it adds to the oats. And then topping them off with berries. It's almost like a PB and J oatmeal. 
and I also like to add a little bit of maple syrup to the top of that for sweetness. But this is pretty much my favorite way to do oats. Sometimes I top them off with some chia seeds or other nuts or seeds that we have on hand. And for lunch, I quickly put together some pasta and then chopped up some vegetables like onions and broccoli and sweet peppers and tomatoes and added some pepperoni. You could also add any cold cut lunch meats to this, but this is a really quick and easy lunch to put together, especially if you're on the go, you can put it in a container. Overall, I want to thank you all for joining me here today. I'll put some recipes in the description box below. Make sure to check out kooeyhousewares.com and I'll catch you next week for a new video. Love you lots.